what you think you are, and then that's, at, that's impacting your testosterone production and your response to it at the androgen receptor itself as well. So I think from a minerals and vitamin standpoint, the low hanging fruits are typically going to be like B vitamins, but in particular, like from a mineral side, you know, you have, uh, you know, magnesium, zinc, and the vitamin D3 are going to be three things that specifically on top of the minerals and vitamins that everyone's familiar with from multivitamins and whatnot are more difficult to get in adequate doses. All but zinc is typically adequately in many multivitamins, but the magnesium in particular almost never is because of the weight of it. You would be having to take a multivitamin that's like eight to 10 capsules otherwise, which just nobody does. Um, and then the vitamin D, it's fat soluble. Typically, you're going to have it in like a soft gel or something, and it's not always going to be at the dose you need in the multivitamin. So just worth noting. Um, so those are just some low hanging fruits that are, if you don't look to those as part of your micronutrient optimization strategy, like you could be overlooking low hanging fruit that debt like is a deterioration of, you know, 100 plus nanograms per deciliter per deficient uh, micro potentially, depending on how severe the deficiency. Um, other things I could point to being obese, like the worst one probably that I probably should have mentioned first, but is like so dramatically impactful on your uh, negative feedback to the hypothalamic pituitary axis. So by that, I mean, men who are obese and women, if you have uh, a significant amount of fat it is going to elevate your aromatization, which is, you know, your conversion of testosterone to estrogen. And this is more impactful in males because of how the brain gets signaled from estrogen, not testosterone directly as significantly. There's a bit of a nuance there, but in general, like you need adequate estrogen to tell your brain, okay, we're good. You don't need to make enough testosterone, more testosterone because I have enough estrogen. Like that's kind of like the downstream cascade of these metabolite conversions is you produce testosterone in order to produce other things too. And the estrogen is a very potent mediator of telling your brain, we're good. And if you have a significantly elevated amount of estrogen being converted from your testosterone that you make because of how much fat you have, you are basically achieving the proportional increase in estrogen that is much higher than the amount of testosterone substrate that led to that conversion. So you have that signal telling your brain, okay, we're good, but the amount of testosterone you actually had to begin with was not good. So that's problematic.